In Mac OS 7.6, we deliver some of the latest software and printing to deliver some very nice improvements in both performance and user interface. With performance, we offer between 25 and 35% faster printing for people using PowerPC-based systems who are printing to network printers. In the area of user interface, we offer some very nice improvements in the printer dialog box. As you see here from this dialog box, I can choose several different printers that are on my desktop from this menu itself instead of having to go through the chooser. In addition, the dialog boxes here have been changed quite a bit, so you no longer have dialog boxes popping up on top of dialog boxes. Here I can choose a different layout. For example, if I want to print two or four different pages on a single page, I can do so from this page. In addition, with desktop printing, you can simply drag a document onto a printer to have it start printing. And if you decide to change which printer you want to have this document print on, you can simply drag and drop it from one printer to the next. So again, it makes tasks that people do quite frequently much simpler and will make people more productive. In Mac OS 7.6, we deliver a new installer which provides a simpler and safer way to install system software. Through a four-step process, we walk customers through the important installation tasks. The first step, read important information, brings to you a several-page document which contains all the critical information you need to install all the software. This document represents a consolidation of much information which was previously available in many different documents. The second step, update your hard disk driver, ensures you go through the important step of making sure your hard disk has the latest drivers. If you have a non-Apple hard drive, you're given the option of skipping this step. The third step allows you to choose the disk under which the system software will be installed. Lastly, the fourth step allows you to select which software you want to install. One of the nice benefits of this new installer is that you can select multiple products and have them all installed in one step. Therefore, you can check all the software you want installed from the CD, select Start, walk away, and 15 to 20 minutes later, you can have all the software installed in your system. You no longer have to administer several different installations. Once you press Start, you will note that the installer automatically runs Disk First Aid to make sure that the final installed software is more reliable. The new extension manager with Mac OS 7.6 provides our customers better tools and information to manage their systems. First of all, you can select items from the menu here, click on this little triangle, and get a description of what that particular item is. Also, this new extension manager is delivering a new foundation for helping our customers understand how the various system software components relate to each other. For example, you can see here that all the various components are clustered under various applications or technologies. As you can see, all the QuickTime extensions and control panels are grouped under QuickTime. So if I wanted to disable or enable this group of extensions and control panels, I can simply do so with a click of a button. Also with this new extensions manager, you can create specific configurations, save them, and share these individual configurations with others. This is important for organizations who want their people using the same configurations. Lastly, with the new Extensions Manager, you can create a text file of all the active control panels, extensions, and other system information within your system folder. This can be a very useful troubleshooting tool for telephone support groups so they can do more accurate troubleshooting of specific problems. With Mac OS 7.6, we're making it even easier for our customers to work with both Windows and DOS files. I've just inserted PC disk and it shows up just as you would expect a disk to show up in the Mac OS. When I open up this diskette, all the files show up as PC files. I'll go ahead and double click one of these items to open it up. And the combination of the built-in functionality within the Mac OS along with the DataViz MacLink Plus translators provides me several options to open up this, in this case, uh, Windows 95 WordPerfect document. In this case, I'll open it up with Clarisworks. One of the nicest things about this PC compatibility solution we deliver is the fact that these PC documents can be translated very easily into Mac OS documents, and you can maintain the formatting, the colors, even graphics. As you see here when this document opens up, that this car graphic here is, is maintained from the Windows document, and all the formatting styles, etc., are all maintained, even colors. What I can do is, also edit this document, and I can then go back and save it as either a Macintosh or a PC file. 
as you can see, since I'm using DataViz MacLink Plus translators, I have a wide variety of translators that I can use to save this file into any document, whether it be MacWrite 2, or in this case, I'll save it back as a WordPerfect 6.0 PC document. One other thing that's important to note about Mac OS 7.6 is I can work with PC files, not just on those files that are delivered on a diskette, but as well as using SCSI drives, SciQuest drives, and other kind of media. So it makes it very easy for our customers to fit in into DOS-compatible environments. CyberDog provides several capabilities to let you easily go back to sites you visited uh, and to keep track of sites and addresses that are important to you. The log is the first of these. The log keeps track of the 100 last sites that you visited and provides you with several ways to view that. Chronological shows you last first, so here you can see the last couple of sites we visited. You can also display the log alphabetically, which makes it easy to find things in alphabetical order, or hierarchically, which shows you the path that you've taken through a set of data. The log also has a find command, so if I want to look for a specific site, such as Yahoo, I can type that and it will go find that site for me. I can then double click on this icon to go directly to that site. So the log gives you a very quick and easy way to go back to places that you've recently visited on the internet. The CyberDog Notebook gives you a way of keeping track of sites that you want to revisit and gives you more or less permanent storage that you control rather than the log where things disappear automatically. Within the notebook, you can go to sites by simply double-clicking on them. You can also add sites from your log. So I can go back to the Yahoo site that I visited earlier, and we can simply drag this into my notebook, and I can now go to Yahoo by double-clicking on it. I can also drag in sites from other places, including web pages that I'm visiting and my desktop. So in this case, I'll drag in the icon for the site that I visited earlier, and now this is in my notebook and I can go back to that site. The CyberDog Notebook also can store references to files on your local desktop or on servers, so I can simply drag this icon for a readme file on my desktop in, and I can now view this file by double-clicking on it. Since you can have multiple notebooks and you can create categories and organize this information, CyberDog gives you a very robust way to store information that includes internet addresses, local files on your desktop, as well as email addresses. The CyberDog Tour provides quick access to all the components of CyberDog from one easy place. Since many people begin their use of the internet by exploring the web, let's click on the Explore button to go to a web page provided by CyberDog that links to other useful references and information on the Internet. When you get to a web page, in this case the CyberDog Net Station, underlined sites can be clicked on to go to those sites. So we can go to Apple information. You can see here pages I visited before because they're highlighted in red. And if we simply click on this link, it will take us to that site, in this case the Apple Computer Home web page. So CyberDog makes it easy to get from one website to another and makes it easy to go back to those sites. The icon in the upper left-hand corner is a live icon that can be dragged to the Finder or to any other application that supports drag and drop. So if I wanted to return to the Apple Computer website, I could simply put this icon on my desktop and click on it to return to that site. I can go to another site that I have already on my desktop by simply double-clicking on that icon, and it will launch the CyberDog web browser and take me directly to that site, which in this case is the Yahoo search site.